So in this video, we're going to be looking at oxidation states and how we can actually assign oxidation number, right? Now, starting off, right, we know that oxidation states is different to charges itself, but in some ways, it's going to be similar. Oxidation states actually tells you the total number of electrons that's been donated or accepted to form an ion or to form part of an actual compound itself. Now, there's five rules that we actually have to remember, but these can actually branch out into some different rules, so we could get more than that as well. So looking at the first rule then in assigning oxidation states, states if we have an uncombined element or an element that is going to be bonded to an identical element we say the oxidation state is zero right so if we were to look at helium right that's going to be zero if we were to look at copper which exists as a giant metallic lattice that's oxidation state it's going to be zero oxygen right although we've got oxygen bonded to another atom because it's an identical atom right we say the oxidation state is still going to be zero and the same thing with hydrogen itself as well now the second rule is is if we have a simple monatomic ion the oxidation state is going to be the same as their charge but it's a bit different here in terms of how we write it so in this case right the charge of sodium is going to be one plus but the oxidation state is going to be plus one right if we were to look at a nitride ion right we've got n3 minus the charge is three minus but the oxidation state is going to be minus three itself the sulfide ion itself is going to be sulfur it's in group six gains two electrons so it's going to be two minus in terms of the charge but then the oxidation state right is going to be minus two itself if we were to look at calcium group two loses two electrons the oxidation state is going to be the same as the charge so in that case if i've got two plus as a charge i've got plus two as an oxidation state itself the third rule is right if we were to look at molecular ions the overall oxidation state is going to be the same as the overall charge so if i were to look at sulfate the overall charge is minus two the overall oxidation state is minus two if i were to look at nitrate which is going to be no3 minus right i know that the overall oxidation state is going to be the same as the charge and so in this case the oxidation state is minus one manganate that's going to be minus one as well and then we've got dichromate which is going to be minus two now the thing is if we were to look at another rule within this rule all of the oxidation states are going to be equal to the overall oxidation state when we add them up right so if we were to look at first of all oxygen which we've got in sulfate and then we were to look at sulfur in sulfate as well right all of these atoms of each of these elements are going to combine together to give an overall oxidation state of minus two now another rule we need to think about is when we deal with oxygen that is combined it's always going to be minus two and so is hydrogen which is going to be plus one apart from two instances which we'll come across later so in this case right to find the oxidation state of sulfur i need to think okay what's the oxidation state of oxygen well we've got oxygen combined to sulfur in this case so the oxygen is going to have minus two right so the oxidation state of oxygen is minus two we've got eight lots of them so that's minus eight overall right so in that case how do we get from minus eight to minus two itself well we need to add six so we know the oxidation state of sulfur is going to be plus six itself and the oxidation state of uh, oxygen is going to be minus two because remember we're just looking at one atom right not all of the atoms if i were to look at that overall right i've got minus eight plus six and that's going to give me minus two overall for the oxidation state of a sulfate ion we can look at nitrate the same thing right we know oxygen in there is going to be minus two and then we also know that we've got three lots of them three times minus two that's going to be minus six overall how do i get from minus six to minus one well i'm going to have plus five for nitrogen itself so i know the overall oxidation state of nitrate is going to be minus one and that's going to be from the three lots of minus twos from the oxygens and then the plus five from the nitrogen itself as well looking at the next one we've got manganate manganate is going to have a minus one overall oxidation state we've got oxygen which is going to be minus two four lots of them that's minus eight overall how do i get from minus eight to minus one well i'm going to have plus seven so i know the oxidation state of manganese is plus seven so over here i've got plus seven for manganese minus two for oxygen and then minus one overall as well right now the next one's a bit trickier right if i were to look at oxygen right we know it's gonna be minus two again we've got seven lots of it seven times by minus two is going to be minus 14 overall and how do i get from minus 14 to minus two itself well if that's the case right i'm going to have to plus 12 right but that plus 12 is going to be split amongst two chromium atoms and so in that case plus 12 divided by two that gives me plus six so the oxidation states for chromium is plus six oxygen minus two and overall we're going to have minus two for dichromate itself 
So moving on to our next rule, right, we've got neutral compounds here and the sum of all of our oxidation states is going to be equal to zero here, right? And you can see we've got a neutral charge overall, right? We've got salts technically and we've got a zero oxidation state for all of these in this case, right? So if I were to look at these, I can split them up and then I can find the individual oxidation states within them. So if I've got magnesium sulfate, I know that's going to contain Mg2 plus and then SO4 2 minus giving me a neutral oxidation state overall i know magnesium is going to have a plus two oxidation state over here i've got sulfate which is going to have a minus two oxidation state overall but then right i know oxygen is going to be a minus two itself i've got four lots of it so that's going to be minus eight overall how do i go from minus eight to minus two well i'm going to have to plus six so that gives me the oxidation state of sulfur if i were to look at aluminium oxide uh, an easier one over here i know aluminium right is going to be uh, plus three itself because it's in group three and then its charge is going to be three plus in this ionic compound and then oxygen is going to be minus two it's in group six gives two electrons to form or two minus ions itself the actual ions that we're dealing with is going to be aluminium three plus and then oxide two minus as well Looking at the next one, we've got nickel chloride, right? In this case, we know chlorine is going to be minus one in terms of its oxidation state. We've got two lots of these minus ones together and they need to make zero. How do we do that? Well, nickel must be plus two itself to balance that out. If I were to look at titanium chloride, right? Again, chlorine, right? We know that one's gonna be minus one. We know that's going to be minus one, minus one, minus one. And so that all together, right, should give us zero when combined with titanium. What must titanium be? You know, your transition metals from GCSE, you remember that they have variable oxidation states. So in this case, right, we've got plus four for titanium itself, right? Now, the next rule is quite tricky because a lot of people tend to forget them, right? When we look at peroxides, uh, metal hydrides and uh, fluorine that's going to be combined, they all have an oxidation state of minus one itself, right? Well, what do I mean by metal hydride? Well, you can see here I've got calcium hydride. In this case, calcium is going to be two plus itself as well. And then we've got hydride as ions over here and we know that the oxidation state of calcium is going to be plus two and the hydride is going to be minus one itself as well. Now, if I were to look at peroxide, hydrogen peroxide used in bleaching stuff, bleaching hair, we know we've got H2O2 peroxide. So we know that oxygen is going to have an oxidation state of minus one and hydrogen is going to have an oxidation state of plus one itself in this case. Yeah. So looking at the next one, we've got lithium peroxide, right? Lithium is going to be one plus in terms of its charge. And you know, the oxidation state is plus one. And then we've got peroxide. So in that case, that means that oxygen is going to have an oxidation state of minus one itself. Now, the next one is bromine trifluoride and remember we said fluorine combined it's always going to have an oxidation state of minus one we've got three lots of them right to make a neutral oxidation state overall right we must have plus three for bromine's oxidation state itself so that's all the oxidation state laws that you need to know right i want you to have a got the following to assign the oxidation state to every single element and remember you're looking at one atom of each element in the compound itself feel free to pause the video and have a go so yeah, starting off with the first one, we've got beryllium chloride, ionic compound, overall oxidation state is going to be zero. Now we know beryllium is going to be two plus in terms of its charge. We've got an ionic compound here, and then we've got two lots of chloride ions itself as well. Now in this case, the oxidation state of chlorine is going to be minus one because we've got chloride ion. If I were to look at beryllium, right, I've got an oxidation state of plus two. The next one, aluminium, a simple monoatomic ion, and we know the oxidation state is the same as the charge, which is plus three. The next one's a bit more tricky. We're dealing with calcium nitrate. To split it up to begin with, right, we know that calcium is going to be plus two in terms of its oxidation state because I've got calcium two plus. And then if that's going to be two plus, then that means we've got two lots of nitrate ions, which are going to be a negative one overall itself, right? So in that case, right, we end up with something that looks like this. If I were to look at calcium, right, calcium is going to have an oxidation state of plus two. If I were to look at um, nitrate, right, that's minus one overall, but oxygen is going to be minus two itself. We've got three lots of minus two, so that's minus six overall. And then, right, 
I've got a minus one overall charge, so nitrogen must be plus five itself as well. So there's our answer for that one, right? If I were to look at iron two, right, that two over here gives us the oxidation state. So I've got iron with an oxidation state of plus two itself. Uh, moving on, right, feel free to have a go at these four tricky ones. I want you to, again, assign the oxidation states to each element in the following so yeah, moving on, right, as we mentioned before, hydrogen peroxide, the oxidation state of hydrogen is going to be plus one, and then the oxidation state of oxygen is going to be minus one in this case. And altogether, that should actually give us a neutral oxidation state, which we've got over here. The next one, we've got an ion that involves vanadium and oxygen as well, quite a few of each one. And we know the oxidation state overall is going to be minus four itself. That's what we can see, because the charge is going to be four minus. And we need to think, okay, oxygen, that has to be um, minus two and we've got seven lots of that so that's minus 14 overall and then we've got to think okay how do i get from minus 14 to minus four well i'm going to have to plus 10 itself right and if i've got plus 10 in terms of an oxidation state right and that's going to be split amongst two vanadium atoms i know that i'm going to have half as much for each atom itself so vanadium in that case is going to have an oxidation state of plus five itself Next one, right, I've got manganate ions. Manganate is going to have a minus one overall oxidation state. Again, oxygen is going to be minus two because it's not a peroxide and it's not going to be uncombined, right? If we were to look at manganese, right, manganese is going to have an oxidation state based on the number of oxygens we've actually got. So that's four oxygens making minus eight overall. How do I get from minus eight to minus one? Well, it's going to be uh, plus seven. So the oxidation state of manganese is going to be plus seven itself. Look at the next one. We've got potassium dichromate. Potassium dichromate, we can split that up in terms of its ions. I end up with K plus. We know potassium in this case, it's going to have an oxidation state of plus one because the charge is plus one. Dichromate, however, right, that's going to be Cr2 or 7, 2 minus. We know that oxygen within this is going to be minus two because it is combined and it is not a peroxide. And we need to think, okay, I've got seven oxygens. So that's going to be seven times by minus two. That's minus 14 overall. And I need to think, okay, if the overall charge is minus two the overall oxidation state is minus two then how do i get from minus two to minus 14 well that's going to be plus 12 itself plus 12 so split amongst two atoms that's going to give me an oxidation state for chromium as being plus six itself